Hi, welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda. Today, very excited to have Bill Doreen with us at the 13th floor. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you here. I've already heard the music and it's fantastic. It's, it's very special. Uh, people are going to get a, a treat when they hear what, what you've come up with for us. Uh, and the reason that you're in Auckland uh, is twofold. Uh, you have a record release thing happening and so you've got some gigs going on. And also there's a film festival happening right now and you, there's a film about you in the film festival called uh, A Memory of Others That's right. that you attended the screening earlier today and from what I understand saw kind of the, for the first time on the big screen just yesterday. So I've just met you just now but my impression of you before was probably a kind of, a, a kind of guy who maybe wasn't that comfortable revealing himself like that. So what was the process like for you of having a film made about you. <laughs> That's the impression that people um, have got, mainly because uh, I, I haven't uh, been properly managed. Uh, right. Um, but also, I haven't particularly wanted to be, um, because it gives me more freedom to do what I want. And uh, so um, that's mainly why I've done, you know, pursued that line, if right. you like. Um, I was approached by Simon, who wanted to bring some of the material out that he particularly liked yeah. from the different periods of activity that I've had working with different groups over yeah. the years. And there's been a few. There have been, it's true, <laughs> it's true, a lot, a lot. I hadn't realized how, really how, 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 how many and, and wonderful uh, people I'd worked with, because uh, I'm still alive, I'm still doing it, you know. Um, and uh, the current co collaborations, there are a couple there, or three actually, that are, you know, they're, they're rolling on as well. Right, right. But, but when he came to me with that idea, um, yeah, it made sense to me. And he phoned me a few times. Uh, so how did he? How to, did he to convince me to, to get my confidence, and right. uh, and I could see that he wasn't, uh, you know. Did he have a particular vision about how that film was going to look, or was it kind of left to see how it would turn out? Yeah, he wasn't so much speaking on a technical uh, level. Um, it was more he was showing his love of the music, really, mm -hmm. and his knowledge of the music, um, and also he, yeah, how that could work in with a visual. Uh, you know, a vision that he had, but he didn't describe to me, I didn't know what he was going to do. It was because it was a surprise to me to find that he was, you know, droning the country and yeah. uh, taking these landscape shots uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, streets of, the, of, the, of about five different cities in New Zealand, so, yeah. yeah. And, of course, you're an artist yourself, which is very evident from watching the film. Were you tempted to kind of want to take part in the creative process of making the film? No, I wasn't because I'm not a filmmaker. I mean, I'm a writer and musician. Right. Um, so I'm, I was happy to let him make the film, and it's always been his film. That's the important thing. So today, at the questions and answers after the film, yep. um, the, uh, the mediator uh, person um, introduced it and began speaking about it as a collaboration. Uh -huh. But it, it's not a collaboration. It's Simon's film. Yeah. You know, and I, uh, I'm very happy to be the subject, <laughs> but because it's such a great film, yeah. you know, I can say that it's not, uh, even though he makes me look good, <laughs> you know, um, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful film. Yeah. Uh, so several people have cried during it, actually. I They've said to me, I believe that. you know, I was brought to tears during that film. Yeah, because <laughs> it, 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 unlike a lot of music documentaries, which kind of focuses on non-musical things and non-creative things, this really gets to the essence of kind of how you do what you do, and we don't get to see that on film very often. Yeah, that's right. I, he just managed to do it. Um, he, he really did. Um, yeah, you'll have to speak to him one day. To <laughs> ask him I'll, I'll give him a call. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of the shooting uh, w was done on like a little three-week tour that you guys yeah. set up just for the shooting. So how did that feel as far as as uh, doing a tour and knowing that this camera was going to be following you around. Yeah, oh well, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been, in, you know, I've been making videos and friends have made videos. We've been doing it since the start, so 30, 35 years yeah. of, uh, of that. So I wasn't a stranger to having a camera pointed at me, except that I was usually involved in the direction or the right. control that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it took, a, took probably two or three days to, to feel comfortable with that, even though I'd sort of, you know, intellectually decided that this was his film and I was just going to, and, um, but then after that, uh, he, he said uh, in an interview recently that he didn't use anything from those first three days of the interviews and things because it just wasn't yeah. uh, natural. And, but Takes then after that, we were away. Yeah. Yeah. 
Excellent. And what about the rest of the bands and, and everybody else kind of just fell into it? I was amazed really how, how just naturally they, they performed. I guess he was filming us playing and performing and so the, you know that's the music is the number one thing yep. even though you, you'll, you, know, you may be a bit nervous but once you're starting the music the music becomes the important thing. Yeah. So yeah. And was it sentimental for you and nostalgic to watch it from beginning to end and kind of have your life flashing before your eyes? Well, the thing is, it's not really my a life. That's that's the I think that's the important thing uh, about this film is that it's not a life. It's mm -hmm. not. He's not trying to get to the psychological depths of my this is true. personality or my order or my disorder for that. <laughs> uh, you know, and so it, it's a document. Airy. Yeah. It's an eerie document. It's a it's a documentary. Uh, you know of what happened when he went through, and then he sources these films, videos, and had some really great ideas for enlivening the material that already exists. Like uh, 20 years ago when I went overseas, I deposited quite a lot of my just material that I didn't know what to do with, with the um, film library, film archive. And he had investigated all that and found that there, in among there, there was 16 millimeter negatives. So there was a 16 millimeter negative um, of uh, one of the videos, The Cup. So then he, um, uh, financed the reprinting of that from right. the negative, and that's the best print now that exists, uh, uh, that has ever existed for a long time. And he's he did his best with a lot of the other material as well, you know, improving the quality of that. Mm. Yeah. So, but nostalgia, I don't know. Um, no. Nope. Well, that's no, good no. enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, we're, we'll get back to talking about the film in a minute, but uh, we wanted to talk about the song that we're going to hear first. Uh, the first mm. one that we're going to hear is called Do You. Mm. So what can you tell me about that one? Oh, well, uh, look, um, it's a very, un it's, an un it's a song that we don't, uh, haven't played, or I don't usually play. Do You is a love song from 1993. Um, which I wrote on a four-track machine in a little town called Martinborough, which is near Wellington. Uh -huh. um, I was living up there, and um, then that ended up on a CD, uh, but I, I haven't performed it since, and we've only just given it a new birth right. in the last uh, two or three weeks. Uh, it's not in the film, and um, the guys here responded uh, to the idea of you know re giving a rebirth to this Love song. Right. I, I don't have a lot of love songs actually, okay. so it's a, it's a pleasure to do something softer and you know with more, but it still has that sort of that rock uh, impulse. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give it a listen. All right. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, we're back here at the 13th floor with Bill Doreen. We just heard Do You. And Bill, if you can just give us a feel for who the other folks who are in your band at this time that are, we just saw playing with you. Yeah, sure. The, um, the longest standing member is Greg Bainbridge on bass. Right. And he joined the band in 1984. 1984. Um, and we toured together and recorded uh, the album Conch, C-O-N-C-H-3, which was, became the best selling of the Builders records. Um, with it had the song Do the Alligator on it. Right. Um, and Greg brought, you know, his distinctive form of bass playing to that. And when I came back to New Zealand after a spell overseas, uh, I looked him up and uh, we started uh, gigging again together at that point. So he's seen it through. He was mm -hmm. there for the tour and was in the film today. Steve Cornane is a drummer. He's worked with Tony, um, I think you know this guy. Uh, Tom Rodwell? Tom Rodwell, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yeah, he's worked with him. Uh, he's worked with uh, Jonathan Crayford. Actually, I worked with Jonathan too over in, when Jonathan was in Paris. He, oh, yeah. he, he looked me up. Oh, cool. And, uh, so, you know, it's a good community of, uh, of yeah, workers. Yeah, Jonathan's been here, as a matter of fact. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he lives uh, up here, doesn't he, yeah. in Auckland? And um, so then we have Jackson Harry, who's a um, guitarist. He works with, he's worked with uh, different musicians in, in Dunedin. And um, he actually features in the film, but he hadn't started playing with us yet. Hmm. Uh, we brought him in for some, uh, some new blood Great. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, well, I met him and discovered that he knew half of my catalogue and right. actually had charts written out for quite a few of the songs, so it wasn't too much work. <laughs> yeah. That's very convenient. So I'm curious, as far as the film, getting back to the film, yeah. what, what do you think people will come away with as far as a feeling for what kind of artist you are from watching that film? Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, they have a, they're coming away with a good feeling about me. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a big surprise and a big pleasure for me. Yeah. Um, but they're coming away, I mean, they're because they love the film. Well, and, uh, I mean, yeah, so... There's a great scene in there where you're playing uh, in front of some kids at a primary school. Yeah, and that's you, right. Yeah, things like teaching? that touch the emotions. Yeah, that's right. My sister, my oldest sister, she was a she's uh, she was a very accomplished pianist, much uh, you know, a real a real pianist. Uh, right. Um, when I was young, and uh, she was a, probably a big influence on me. But uh, yeah, Simon Simon had the idea of uh, tying in some if I wrote some poetry. Right. that I could read during the performance of this ch children's gamelan orchestra. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and my sister said, oh, look, we'll do a kind of a version of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Because, um, you know, a little twink that's actually what they're playing. Right. And so um, I started, well, in a twinkle, right, the poem like that. In the, in the, and that's how this twinkle thing started. And, but actually, the way they play it, you wouldn't, you don't, unless you know it's Twinkle Twinkle, you wouldn't know. Right. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the beautiful things that happened. Yeah. There were some uh, pr wonderful experiences during the, the tour that he captured. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yeah. you've got a book here with you now. Yeah, sure, yeah. This yeah. is what, Enclosures? It is, yeah, enclosures. Uh, shall I just hold it up to the there? camera? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and uh, this, this is what I'm selling is my merchandise at the moment. <laughs> it's at your merch um, table these days. Yeah, sold quite a few today. Excellent. And um, it's a collection of five stories. This one. Um, this is really what I work hard, work hardest and longest. This is what I, s I sweat blood over. Really. Um, the music is um, something that I enjoy doing immensely, and um, I guess it's. Uh, comes naturally, but it's as one gets older, it's harder to to coordinate. Musicians, uh, everyone's trying to earn a living and right. uh, working, you know, with other groups. And because of that, um, so yeah, it's kind of miraculous to get a group together. But when you do, you come together and bang, and you know, it's magic. Yeah. But with the writing, I I, I work. This is what I work at. And it's a something more solitary uh, endeavor, obviously. So. Yeah, it is really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is obviously yeah, more solitary. And, uh, yeah. Do you like to have a balance between the two? Yes. Well, I don't trust myself particularly. How so? Well, I uh, have to write uh, to uh, to figure things out. I mean, uh, in speaking sp to you now, for example, mm -hmm. um, I probably shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, writing enables you to. You know, to think, um, 
in words uh, slowly and clearly and you can mm -hmm. arrive at conclusions and or stories or the forms of stories or invent characters or whatever it takes time and uh, after a year of sweating blood you know you can say yes mm. you know in a conversation I mean you can make some look at all those things people say on a yeah, on the internet that they regret, surely. <laughs> well, it's a bit like that, yeah. Sadly, it doesn't float off into the ether anymore. It stays <laughs> with them. Uh, when you're writing, there, people are different kinds of writers. Some people, it just flows out of them and they keep everything. And some people craft everything and they're erasing things and, and kind of pouring over every word. How would you define Yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah I try to, um, to have sort of flights of... Uh, inventive, uh, but I, I always go back and, and edit it pretty cruelly. But that can, that approach can bring about kind of writing that you would never get from a more dispassionate approach. Right. So yeah, I, I mean you know I've been writing for a long time. Mm. All right, we're gonna hear another song. Okay. Song called Peppermint Train. Yeah. What's where did this one come well, from? Well, that's a brand new song that we really um, put together uh, in the last week or so, mainly to do for you after you invited us to come here. Oh, no, thank true. you. I am yeah. very honored. So this is, uh, it's never been performed before. And um, Peppermint Train, it's, um, it's a kind of a snapshot of the whole political thing that's happening at the moment with the disinformation and, right. um, you know, Britain leaving the, the uh, EU and uh, the reasons for that, the, what's making people make their decisions. You know, sometimes it's uh, it's pure manipulation yeah. of the highest degree. Yeah. Um, and the peppermint train is there's a kind of connection. It's the rubble man is ready for the peppermint train. The rubble man is going to have the rubble of the cities. Uh, it's a con it's a connected to the Second World War. The the terrible images of the uh, the trains yeah. uh, of the deportations, and. Um, so it sounds like an innocent psychedelic song, but it's actually, uh, uh, if you examine it, yeah, yeah then uh, there'll be something there for people who want a bit of a political message as well. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, I can't wait to hear it. Let's, let's play for the folks. Skipping, scrapping, thrusting, bustling, churning, burning, and the season's readjusting. They ask you your views, and none of them you choose. Imagining a man by the pattern of his shoes. Renting hatreds, selecting ethereal melodies, legends of celebrity thrills. As the old boy of smothering kills. Don't forget it,
Germans are bottling, the Cavaliers are camping, the Giants are squatting, the Davids are haggling. How close do you go? Oh, my brain will set me every day. Rats, stops, and whippers will grow. We got uh, one more song that we're going to hear from Bill Doreen. We just heard Peppermint Train, which rocked out pretty cool. And to me, I heard kind of a very kind of New York Lou Reedish thing and a Dylan thing going on in there. Are those obvious touchstones for you? Do you oh yeah, I guess yeah. You can't um, yeah, I can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Fantastic. So you said that's a new song that you that you've just recently written. Do you find that you're writing as many songs nowadays as you always have been, or does it come in waves? Is it slowed down? How has it worked? Well, I think uh, I did spend a period of time um, working mainly on translations of, of songwriters that I discovered, particularly when I was visiting Europe uh -huh. or living there. Um, so I kind of discovered some songs going back a bit, maybe tried to find ones that were out of copyright. Right. So uh, Berold Brecht, right. Aristide Bruin who um, Toulouse Lautrec did uh, a, a great painting of, and, and he wrote a lot of great, you know, great songs. One of them's called On the Street, Dans la Rue. Uh, I, I did a translation of that. So I was working on lots of translations for a while, but lately I kind of realized the importance of writing songs to, you know, just my stability. Right. And uh, so I started writing more original songs again uh, lately. Kind of keeps you grounded, does it? Or I think it does, really. Yeah, I mean, it does, yeah. yeah, yeah. It must feel yeah. great to write a song. I uh, wish I had, could say I could have written one, but it must. You must haven't? Be. No, <laughs> I just listened to a lot of them. <laughs> oh, you'll have to start. I, maybe it's not too late, yeah. All right, the last one that we're going to hear is we've got you on the piano and it's called Repossession. You mentioned to me earlier that this was kind of a, a varied version of one that you had previously done on guitar. Yes, it was. There was a, a guitar version done in 1994 um, in Dunedin, uh, which, w which ended up on a CD. Um, it was ill-fated, the CD, because the mastering was, was messed up. The, uh, something strange happened, <coughs> and it ended up being horribly compressed. Right. So the CD was virtually jettisoned by the label and um, so, yeah, very few people will have heard that version. But this version reverts even further back yeah. to a theatre piece of the 19s, um, yeah, uh, 1980s. 88, uh, there was a theatre show that, that this, this was part of the story. Um, and in the story, the, the hero's father's uh, possessions are taken back by the, um, the debt uh, collection um, organisation. Um, and this was performed in theatres around New Zealand, like the Maidment Theatre in Auckland, the Allen Hall Theatre in Dunedin, um, the Depot Theatre in, in Wellington, and the uh, Arts Centre Theatre in Christchurch. So, uh, and Greg uh, played on half of those. I played with another bass player called Chris Orange in Auckland and, um, and in Wellington, but Greg played on the Southern League Tour. That's mm -hmm. Greg who's playing with yep, me with on this version. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll leave with that. Thank you very much for stopping by. Oh, I know you've been, been really pleasure. busy. I, I it's been I fantastic. I've been very talkative. I That's hope. the way we like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good luck with everything. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot.